What would happen if the SK61 and the GK96S keyboards would have a baby? Well, first of all, aside from making historical medical news from the fact that two keyboards were able to genetically produce an offspring, uh, cool things maybe. <laughs> well, the fine folks at EpoMaker have created the SK71 to answer that question. It's actually technically older than the GK96S. Uh, I've actually had this longer than the GK96S. Oops. Well, this here is the SK71 from EpoMaker. It's a tiny keyboard in a compact form factor that somehow manages to jam arrow keys and a number pad all onto this little plank and an even smaller size than the GK96S. And uh, it's a little bit weird. Coming in at around $90, the SK71 is quite possibly the most compact keyboard to include arrow keys and number pad, at least as far as I've seen. You've got the black and gray and the white and gray like I have here. Inside the box, you'll receive the keyboard, an instruction manual, a shining, shimmering, splendid USB-C cable, extra keycaps to swap out for you Mac users, as well as a plastic keycap puller and a key switch puller. Much like the GK61, SK61, D K61 and so on, this keyboard is hot swappable with Gateron optical switches. EpoMaker calls this a 70% keyboard. With just 10 keys more than a traditional 60% keyboard, they're able to pack in a number pad and arrow keys, but it does come with some compromises in order to achieve that many keys at such a small form factor. There have been some tweaks and changes to some of the sizes of some of the keys in order to fit all this, and it's going to take some getting used to. One of the biggest key differences you might notice, aside from this side of the keyboard, is the left side of the keyboard. The tab, caps, and left shift key are all smaller than they would normally be on any other keyboard. The tab key, which is normally, I think, 1.75 or 1.5U, is just 1U, meaning it's the same width as a normal letter key. Caps comes in at just a little bit bigger, looks like maybe it's a 1.25U, and then the left shift is a 1.75U, which is about the same width that you would find usually on a right shift key on 65% keyboards like the Echo 3068. Your control, win, and alt keys on that side are all normal sized. So by cutting down the size of the tab, caps, and left shift key, they're able to move the letters all over just a little bit in order to accommodate for what's going to be coming in on the right side. And this is what really throws me off when it comes to this keyboard. It took a lot of getting used to when I first started testing this keyboard. I kept typing W when I meant to type Q, for example. My keys, the, my fingers were just shifted a little bit over to the right, or at least so it seemed, when in actuality, my fingers were where they would normally go, but the keys were shifted over to the left. If you'll notice here, the left edge of the spacebar is aligned with the left edge of the C key. Normally on a keyboard, the spacebar usually ends somewhere in the middle of the X key. Now this may seem like a minor difference, but when you're so used to typing on a more traditional standard layout, it is really confusing. Now on the right side of the keyboard, in order for them to fit those arrow keys, you have no right, alt, or control, which is fine. I never really use alt or control on the right side of the keyboard. What you do have is a 1U function key, which you'll use to trigger secondary functions such as adjusting the lighting or pressing the function row on the number row of the keyboard. And that's another thing. The top row of the letters is actually aligned now with the number row because of the fact that the letters are all shifted over. The backspace key is a normal size, Enter is smaller at about 1.75U from what I can tell. The right shift looks like it's like maybe 1.25, 1.5. Oh, another weird thing is that the backspace is over to the left more than it would normally be. After zero, instead of having plus and minus there, you just have the backspace key and plus and minus are instead over the number pad next to numlock. Then with the number pad, you have the right arrow going into the number pad itself under the one key. I don't think that 
that's that huge of a deal. I think the GK96 had that as well, and it wasn't really a problem. Unlike the GK96S, there is no enter key on the right side of the number pad. If you're used to using a 10 key and you're crunching numbers all the time, usually you're used to having an enter key on the right side of the number pad. It's just muscle memory. Keyboards have been that way for years. I know when I use my number pad for work, I always just reach for that enter key right there. So to not have one there, is really weird it really throws you off it does take some time to get used to but i do think it is possible i did start to get used to it by the time i was done using this keyboard and testing it out i moved on to another keyboard and started testing that for a video and when that happened i realized that i was typing too much to the left like i didn't realize it but my brain did start to adjust to the layout of this keyboard the keycaps included are pbt die sublimated gsa profile keycaps much like the ones on the sk61 well i do like like that the SK61 had a very clean minimalistic looking design on their keycaps. This definitely follows that but there are a couple of keycaps that have a secondary function actually printed on the keycap. The SK61 did not have that which could be a little weird and intimidating especially for new users if you're just coming into a 60% keyboard and you don't know where your secondary functions are on that keyboard it's gonna throw you off and you might hate that experience. This is at least nice to have those secondary functions labeled on here so you have a better idea of what it is you can do with this keyboard without having to refer to a manual or changing the customization in your software. So for practicality and ease of use when it comes to a keyboard of this form factor, that is a nice little plus. Speaking of software, this has the same software as the GK61, SK61, GK96, etc. They're all part of the same family, in other words, so they're all able to run on that same type of software, so you're able to customize it. Like my previous videos on other GK61-esque keyboards, I'm not going to run through all the software features because I have covered it on my GK61 video, which I will stamp here so you can check that out if you want. Now if you do pick up this keyboard, you better make sure that you pick up one that has keycaps that you like, because changing the keycaps on this thing is going to be pretty difficult. For the most part, yeah, your letters, your numbers, those will be easy to replace, but I mean when you consider the various weird sizes of the other keys like tab, caps lock, enter, those are going to be really hard to find a compatible set. I want to really stress that this is not a bad board, but it is going to take a lot of getting used to. In the end, it's all a muscle memory thing, if you can take the time to retrain your brain to get used to this and you make this keyboard your daily driver you don't switch between other keyboards like someone like me who does because I review other keyboards then you'll be fine it's gonna take some time just stick with it get past that learning curve because if you do you might end up absolutely loving this thing for its size plus functionality with the extra keys you wouldn't normally get with a 60% keyboard I think it's something to at least consider if you are maybe in a tight spot where you, you need space but you need your number pad you can definitely look into this one so if you are looking for quite possibly the most compact keyboard to include arrow keys and a number pad look no further than the SK61. I will include links in the description. They are affiliate links so you guys can check out this keyboard if you want to and if you pick it up it helps support the channel here which helps with throwing money at it so that we can afford things like a microphone or whatever else in the future. That's gonna do it for me. If you guys like this video you can check out this keyboard review here or you can check out something a little bit different right here. I gotta go. I filmed two videos today and my throat's getting a little <clears throat> A little, little horse, a little toasty, a little spicy in there. <laughs> All right, I'm out of here. Peace out.